Amen. You know, God always confirms His word. The choir has done the preaching for me. Well, God bless you. Amen. And it confirms that indeed God is in our midst. Amen. We are really thankful to God for the privilege He has given all of us to be here to listen to His word, either in person or online. It's a privilege. Amen. And we don't take it lightly. And I also want to thank the church leadership for this opportunity given unto me to share the word of God with you. With my mothers, my fathers, my brothers and sisters, I am really humbled by that. And I say, God bless you. Amen. I know I'm the least qualified and I ask God to please help me to speak today. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We know you brought us here for a purpose to hear your word. I present myself before you as a vessel that you will speak through me your word to your people. I present every heart before you this morning. May our hearts be a fertile ground to receive the word that you have for us so that the word that you are giving unto us this morning would have the impact that you intended to have to glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, today is the first Sunday of the last month of the year. Amen. And during this time, I mean, we are very thankful to God for all that he has seen us through. Amen. But it also comes with some kind of mixed feelings because during this time, we are reflecting upon our life. We are doing an evaluation of what the year has, has, has um, done to us so far. Amen. Some dreams that we were expecting to achieve. Some plans that we were hoping to materialize this year that has still not yet materialized. So it comes with some mixed feelings, amen. But today, as the song said, we have a God who is the only God. And that God is here to remind us that he is for us. And if he is for us, there is nothing that can stand against us. Nothing that will stand in the way of we achieving what God has purposed for us. So that takes me to our message for today. It's titled, God is for us, amen. God wants to remind all of us this morning that he is for us. He is for me. He is for you. He is for us as a church. He's for our family and he's for our descendants. Amen. And if he is for us, what confidence can we have? The confidence that we have is the fact that he is the only God. And he has proven time and time and time again that he's the only God. Amen. From generation to generation, he has proven his faithfulness. And that should give us a confidence that indeed is the only God. And we read our first scripture, Romans chapter 8, the verse 31 to 32. So it says that what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. The verse 32 says, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. This morning, this free things, this things that he says he will freely give unto us, it stems from the promises that God has given unto you and I. Amen. And where do promises come from? For promises to come into the picture, it would mean that there exists some kind of relationship. Amen. I can only promise a brother or a sister if only I have a relationship with them. And there are different levels that we can relate to one another. But the highest level of relationship is that which is established through covenants. Amen. And this morning, the relationship that God has with me, the one that he has with you and he has with us as a church, is a covenant relationship. Amen. That is established based on the blood of Christ Jesus. Amen. And that should give us the assurance that if he is in a relationship with us based on the blood of Christ, then he is bound by the terms of that covenant to fulfill every promise that he says he's going to do unto us. Amen. So this morning, if as we come to the Lord's table, Jesus Christ on the night before he was um, betrayed, he said that this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Amen. So by the blood of Christ, you and I, as we are here today, we have become partakers of that covenant that God has called us into. And in that covenant, he remains the God who blesses. He remains the one who fulfills all that. He says he will bless us. And that's what he would do. He says he will lift us up. That's what he would do. He says he will multiply us. That's what he's going to do. Amen. Why? Because of two things. Because of the promise and the oath. He is bound by those two things to ensure that all that he has said he would do, he would do. 
And as the choir said, he's the only God that we know. And he has proven it time and time and time again that whatever he says, he is bound by his word to do so. And so he says that in the verse um, 32 says, if he did not spare his own son, why didn't he do that? Because at that point in time, he was bound by his words to fulfill that promise. Amen. So if he did not spare his own son, but he gave him up to shed his blood, to forgive our sins, to bring us life again, to raise us up from the dead, then if he did not spare his own son, that is your assurance right there. That whatever it is that you are desiring for, all those promises that are set in his covenant, he's able to freely give them to us. Amen. So this morning, as, as you reflect upon the year and as you think about how the year has gone so far, maybe you might have made some wrong decisions here and there that have caused your, your journey to kind of bend over. But don't worry, amen. God is for us. And that's all that matters. He is for us. That's all that matters. And when we, we look at um, the example of Abraham is the best example that we can use because God showed how faithful he is when it comes to his covenant. Because when God called Abraham, he had given him a covenant. I mean, he had gone into a covenant with him. And we want to just look at um, how God fulfilled that promise and how he stayed faithful to that promise. So in the first account, you see how God calls Abraham. And then he tells him that leave your family and go to the land that I'm going to promise you. So the Bible says, when you read from Genesis chapter 12 all the way to chapters 22, it says that Abraham left and they got to Canaan. But when he got to Canaan, the Canaanites were there. They were dwelling on the land, the land that God had promised to give to him as an inheritance. The Canaanites were there. And not only that, as when he got there, it says that then there was a famine in the land. So he had to gather his stuff and then head to Egypt. He might be wondering, God, you have given me this dream. I am very confident you gave me this dream. You told me you were going to do this for me. But it looks as if that dream is being occupied by someone else. God sent you to a particular place of work, and he promised he was going to give you a particular position. But when you got there, you realize the caliber of people that have that position, you don't qualify. At this point, God is saying that I am the one who gave you that dream. Amen. I am the one who sent you there. That's all you have to know. Amen. Not only that, because of the family that they went to Egypt, Abraham told Sarah, as we go there, I know you're a very beautiful woman, just like myself, amen. <laughs> amen. So when we get there, please tell them about my sister so that my life will be spared. So they, they tell this lie. But look at how faithful God is. The scripture says that the princess of the land recommended Sarah to Pharaoh to take her as the wife. But the Lord plagued Pharaoh, and he plagued the whole of Egypt with great plagues just because of Sarah and Abraham. Why? Because they had a promise that God was supposed to fulfill through them. So God did everything within his means to ensure that that promise would not be terminated. Amen. That is the God who is for us. That is the God who we know, who is telling us this one that he is for us. And if he is for us, then he would freely give us all things. Not only that, it also happened when they went to Gera, when they came to Abimelech. They told, he told the same lie. And the scripture says, God visited Abimelech in a dream and told him that, no, let this woman go. Do not touch her. And the, as I was reading, it says that even God closed the womb of Abimelech and his wife and all his female servants because of Abraham and Sarah. That is how far God is willing to go. Because he is bound by the covenant terms. He is bound by his promises. And he has sworn by his own self, his own name, that he would do whatever it is that is possible to ensure that that promise would come to pass. And do you know why? Because when that promise is fulfilled, it means that the kingdom of God is established here on earth. It means his purpose is established here on earth. So that dream coming to pass is even more important to God than you think is important to you. Amen. Because when that dream comes to pass, it fulfills his will for mankind. His kingdom is established here on earth. Amen. So this one, let us be encouraged. Let us know that the God who has called us, the one who gave us that dream, the one who gave us that vision as a church, he is for us. And if he did not spare his own son, but gave him up and delivered him up for us, then through Jesus Christ also, through his blood, which have brought us into this covenant, he would ensure 
And whatever he has said concerning us will come to pass. Amen. Amen. Now let us see. So God, we know, remains faithful and will continue to remain faithful to his word. But what part do you and I have to play in this role, man? He asks us for two things. He says that when you read um, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, he says that we should imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Amen. He says those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So let's look at faith. Let's read um, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verse 19. This is Abraham. Since we are talking about Abraham, we look at his example. It says that this is after God had given him the promise and he had gone through all that. It says that not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. How can we inherit all the promises that God has given us? He's saying that through faith and patience. And when it comes to faith, he's given us the example of our founding father, Abraham, what he did. In the verse 9, and he says that he faced the fact that his body was dead. He faced the fact that the womb of Sarah was dead. That was the fact that was staring at them in the face. Today, what is the fact that is staring at you? That is the fact. The fact is that, oh, maybe I have been experiencing weakness in my body for so long and I am trusting in God for healing. And that's that today I still don't have that healing. Oh, the fact is that, oh, God told me to pursue this particular cause. But the grace I'm currently having is nothing to write home about. That is the fact. You're not going to dispute that fact. Hallelujah. The fact is that, oh, maybe I have been in this relationship for so long, hoping that they will turn into marriage, but it's still not happening. That is the fact. Hallelujah. But this morning, God is saying that let us face the fact. But the good news is that the fact is not the truth. The truth is the promise that God has given us. And that that, that promise is the reality. It's the reality that exists in the realms of the spirit. But that reality is, is real to you and I in the flesh. If only we hold on to the faith. Amen. This one, let me encourage all of us. What is the fact that you are facing? Do not be in denial and deny that fact. You'll be doing your own self a disservice. Amen. Acknowledge the fact. He says that Abraham faced the fact. Yes, I am old. At this point, I, I don't see how it's going to be possible for me to even make Sarah pregnant. Sarah has also, he, she has hit menopause, menopause, menopause. Amen. That is the fact. But thanks be to God, that promise that God has given you, that is my truth. That is my reality. And so he said that he was not weakened in faith. So usually we are weakened in faith. We are weakened in faith. We are weakened in faith when we allow the fact that we are seen to get in the way. At this point, the Lord is encouraging us. Look to the truth. The truth is the promise. And like our brother said, faith comes by hearing. Your faith that you have, you got it from the promises that God has given you. And that is the truth. And that is your reality. And then he says that, I can assure you too, that whatever fact that you have right now, there is a reality. There is a truth in the scriptures. If only you'll be diligent enough to seek for that truth. Amen. If it's healing that you are looking for, he says that Jesus Christ has borne all our sins on his body on the cross. And by his stripes, you are healed. That is the truth that can counteract that fact that you are facing. Amen. If you are a single lady, a single guy trusting in God for marriage, he's saying that none shall lack their mate. That is the truth. Amen. So you hold on to that truth and you, you allow it to strengthen you and build you up. You don't allow the fact that you are experiencing now to weaken your faith. Amen. If it is children that you are looking for, that is the fact. You might be 45, 50, you are waiting to conceive. That is the fact, yes. But what is the truth? The truth is saying that children are inheritance from the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Amen. So you hold on to that. The scripture also says that none of you will be barren. You would have your own children. That is the truth. So seek for that truth. Seek for that reality. As a church, God has given us a vision. Vision 2012. It's been, what, 10 years now? That is the vision. But what is the truth? The truth that we are looking forward to is the promise that God gave us. And if it is God who gave us that promise, oh my dear, then we are rest assured. We will hold on to it. He said that let us write it down. That anybody who sees it will run with it. For the vision is for an appointed time. Do it, Tyrese. He says, well, wait for it. Wait for it. 
Wait for it, amen. And it will surely come to pass. Why? Because God is for you. Because God is for us as a church, amen. And he is the God that we know who has proven himself over and over again that he's able to do just what he says, amen. Amen. And for some of us, amen, the dreams and the vision that God has given unto us, they are generational dreams, amen. And that is why we have to hold on to it because if we let go, Letting down a whole generation. I mean, we don't want that to happen. The other thing that he's asking us is patience. So we are going to read James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. And he says that, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Why? The verse 2 says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. The verse 4 says, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. So then it becomes interesting. Why is it that I'm going through trials and he's saying I should count it all joy? Because he's saying that those trials that you are facing right now, those are the facts that you are seeing, amen. The fact that you are, I believe all of us here might have gone through a trial one way or the other. We might be experiencing certain facts in our lives. And he's saying that all those facts that you are seeing, count them as joy. Why? Because it is coming to test your faith. Your faith in what? In the promise. Your faith in what? In the reality. Your faith in what? In the truth. Amen. But he's saying that you need all those trials to come because it has a work to do in our lives. Amen. And what is that work? To produce patience. And then the verse 3 says that we should allow patience to have its complete work in us. So patience has a work to do in us. And that work that patience has to do is to build our character. Hallelujah. So that if we don't allow patience to have its perfect work in us, then character will not be built. And when we go to the verse 4, it says about let patience have its perfect work so that we will be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Amen. And so that character is built. When that promise comes, you wouldn't know how to handle that promise. Hallelujah. And so that character is built. When that vision is accomplished, if you don't have the right character, you might be, you, you will not know how to handle that blessing. Amen. So let us allow patience to have its perfect work in us and build a character that God is intending for us to for us to, for us to get. Amen. And let's look at Jesus as our example. The scripture says that Jesus Christ humbled himself, even to the death of the cross. And he submitted his will to the will of the Father. That is the character that God is looking to be built in you and I. So that when that promise has come and God is asking us to give it back to him one way or the other, it will not be difficult for us to withhold that blessing because we know where it came from. And we know what he had taken us through to get that. So when Christ was at that point, he said, that, oh, it's not going to be a problem for me. I can submit my will to the will of the Father because I know that he has brought me here. Because the scripture makes us to understand that Jesus Christ, his birth was prophesied by the Spirit. His death, the Holy Spirit was there with him. Even in his resurrection, the Spirit was there. So even Jesus Christ had to believe that God was able to raise him up from the dead. Amen. And that is why he fully trusted in the Father to do that for him. So that is the character that God is looking for, you and I, to allow ourselves to be built. Amen. And let's look at Abraham. At the time when the promise had finally come and he had had Isaac, the Bible says that God comes to him and tells him that go and sacrifice your son. He doesn't ask for Ishmael. You know, Abraham was rich. He had cattle. He had possessions. God didn't ask that any of those sacrifices, but he asked for the sacrifice that he had waited so long to have, Isaac. But because Abraham had allowed himself for his character to be built, it wasn't a problem for him to sacrifice Isaac. When you read Hebrews, it says that he knew that even if he was able, to, if, if, even if he sacrificed Isaac unto God, God was able to raise him up again from the dead. Why? Because he knew he himself he was a dead man, that he had no way, there was no way he was going to have a child, but God gave him life. So that same God who gave him life had what it took to bring Isaac back to life, even if he sacrificed him. Amen. This morning, please, let's allow God to work in us by allowing patience to have its perfect work. And God knows it's a tough task. So he says he wouldn't leave us as orphans. He has given us the greatest promise, his Holy Spirit, 
on the inside of us to help us build that character, to help us build that patience. Amen. So that in the end, all that he has promised us, you and I would experience it to glorify his name. Let me use this, this application to bring my message to an end. And I want to apologize in advance. I don't want to stir up any emotions, but I'm going to use the match on Friday between South Korea and Portugal. Hey. I am no soccer fan expert, but just bear with me on this one. No emotions, please. But as the match was going on between Portugal and South Korea, you know, Uruguay and Ghana was also playing in there. And around the, <laughs> around like the 80th minute on the screen, at that time, it was a draw. It looked like it was a draw game between South Korea and Portugal. Uruguay was leading by two goals, right? So the scoreline says that, oh, if the results stay this way, then Portugal and Uruguay would advance to the next stage. And in the 90.1 minute, South Korea gets another goal. And then the scoreline just changed. So that, the dynamics just changed. Hallelujah. That goal changed the whole dynamics of the game. And the board just flipped and said, oh, now it's going to be Portugal and South Korea that are going to advance to the next step. And I got a message right there. You know, there are other players who have to work hand in hand to ensure that that destiny that God has given you, that promise that he has given you is going to come to pass. What if South Korea had said at the 90th minute, you know, we are tired. Let us just let go. They would not have qualified. Amen. But they persevered. And in that extra time, got a goal. And that changed the whole dynamics of the game. Please, are we, are, we, are we getting what God is trying to let us understand? So please, this morning, it is your perseverance, my perseverance, that will lead us to attain that goal. If we give up, then all the other players would have nothing to work out for. Because they are all working towards that goal, that dream. And it's up to you and I to keep on what? Persevering. Amen. This morning, please, do not be discouraged. And the beautiful thing is that our referee, is God who is for us. Our referee is the only God that we know. And he determines what full time is. Hallelujah. If he has not blown the whistle, we are still playing. Hallelujah. Until that whistle is blown, we are still in the game. And the confidence that we have that can make us be rest assured is that he is the one who is giving us that promise. He's giving us that dream. And he says, you play extra time. I know when it's going to come through. Don't give up. I am with you. Amen. Just allow patience to have its perfect work. You might be tired going back and forth. You might be thirsty. Get some water and drink. You need some energy drink. Drink it and wait. Stay in prayer. Persevere. Keep on going. And know that that Holy Spirit that he gave you, that was his greatest promise that he has given to you. And he is with you always to help you to ensure that that which he has said concerning you would come to pass. Please, as we face the facts of life, let us not allow those facts to weaken our faith. Because those facts, they are not the truth. The world might make it seem as if those facts are the truth, but they are not. Our truth as believers who are in the covenant with God, our truth are his promises. Our truth is the reality that he has given us in his word. Amen. And that is what we hold on to. Choir, if you can please help me sing the song. Anything is possible in this atmosphere for our God is more than able. He can do anything. Oh, anything is possible. 